Hey there, Nick Jatakis here. In this video, we're going to go over how to hide user input when writing shell scripts. This can be really useful if you're prompting a user to enter in a password, an API key, or other sensitive information, and you don't want each character that they're typing to be echoed out in real time. So in this video, we're going to go over two different ways to do this. The first way is going to be compatible with Bash and other Bash-like shells, and the second solution is going to be POSIX compliant in case you need maximum compatibility. So I've got this little demo script that we're going to go over. You know, we're going to hit the code up in a second here, but here's how the script works. So basically, it's just asking me to enter in some API key. And I'm going to put in one, two, three, and I just type that out right now. But notice that there's no output on the screen. But if I hit enter here, we can actually see that I did input one, two, three. Now, for demo purposes, you know, for the sake of this script, you know, I'm taking this uh, API key variable that's set up in the script, and I'm just printing it out to the screen here, you know, in an echo or a printf command. But in realistically, in your script, you know, if you have some sensitive information here, you're probably not just going to echo it out, right? You would do whatever custom logic that your script does with whatever uh, input they're providing. But uh, you get the idea. But yeah, let's go and check out this little demo script here. And uh, before we actually get into the meat and potatoes of this, which is basically the highlighted lines here, you know, I did set up a little bit. Uh, of niceties around the script, I suppose. So for example, you know, if you do uh, the script again here, but you don't put in any input, then you're basically going to have uh, a continuous while loop that will ask you to put in some type of input, or you can hit control C here to halt the script here. You know, that's all what's happening down here. Basically, you know, I've got this little while loop, and uh, you know, if the variable key is empty and this read is setting up this variable here, if it's empty, it's going to ask us to hit control C to halt the script or input, else it's going to, you know, echo out for demo purposes. There's the, the key variable, and then it's going to break out of this while loop here. You know, this way it's not uh, going to run until infinity and beyond. So that's basically how it works. Here, right? It would be expected that you put in your to-do custom logic here in the happy case here, where we do have uh, some key val value there, and then you can do whatever you want with it, not probably echo it out to the screen like we're doing here. But yeah, that's basically just how the script works. You know, I kind of wanted to briefly go over that one, just so we don't have to focus on this other stuff, and we can just focus specifically here on these highlighted lines. So it's actually right now using the POSIX uh, compatible way, but let's actually switch it up and go to the bash way. And it's going to be apparent here that this is probably not going to work. So if I run the script here, we immediately get this illegal option dash s. And the reason there is because at the very top of the shell script, I have it set to be shell, not bash, as the um, shell environment that the script is being run in. And it just so happens that this dash s flag doesn't exist in shell and dash and some other shells, whereas it does with bash, z shell, ash, in case you're using alpine, and a couple of other shells as well. And the dash s flag is actually the thing that is, yeah, hiding the output when we type in. But let me just change this over to bash so the script starts to work again, just so we can see it work with uh, option number one here. And we can see one, two, three, and then we get the output over here. So yeah, this s flag is pretty handy there. You know, you can think of it as like secret input, but really it's basically just saying like, hey, by the way, like any uh, characters that you input, like don't echo it back out. And that's all it's really doing here. But um, yeah, let's go and check out option number two here because, you know, let's say that you do have some maximum compatibility use case where it needs to be POSIX compliant. You know, I can still keep this as bash, but, you know, let's put it back to shell just to keep me honest here. And you can always run shell check as well. But yeah, this is basically doing very something uh, similar, right? We are still using the read command like we are up here, still using the dash r flag, and we're still setting up that key variable that we can use down below. The only difference here with the read command here is we're not using dash s, but instead we're using this stty command and that basically says uh, the way it's set up here to be like, okay, now let's disable echoing out any characters to the screen. Let's go and ask the user for their input, in this case, the API key. You know, as I type in one, two, three or whatever, you know, it's not going to be printed out. And then after that, let's re-enable echoing things back to the screen. And then uh, we're good to go. Now, there is something kind of interesting and very subtle about this setup here in the sense that technically, if I were to comment this out, you would think probably, and I definitely thought this too, that anything beyond this just wouldn't get printed out to the screen. Like we would not see these print outputs, whether or not we're using echo literally or printf, like we just wouldn't see them, right? But if we actually run this script, uh, we can see one, two, three here, uh, it actually does get output, which is quite interesting. And you know, if I hit enter a couple of times here, you know, everything works normal. Hit control C, everything's good. I can type in the clear command and uh, life is good. It's as if like, this is maybe optional. Maybe we don't need it, but um, we actually kind of do because if I go and drop into bash instead of Z shell and we run the same exact script that we just did before, uh, I can do the one, two, three here. 
Huh, life is pretty good. It actually echoed it out. Interesting. But if I hit enter here, you can hear me typing that. Nothing's happening. I hit control C. We can see that happening. I'm going to type in AAA, hit enter, and we can see command not found. I can type in, uh, you know, control L's not doing anything. I can do clear and hit enter, but you really didn't type, uh, you didn't see me type in clear. So it's almost like, yeah, my prompt is just not echoing out anything here. And, um, I'm guessing, and I don't know if this is 100%, you know, let us know in the comments below. Z Shell is probably doing something to autocorrect that. Like, it's just resetting the prompt or terminal or whatever in some way that uh, this is actually being set back to on after the script exits. But Bash and regular Shell, you know, if I drop into Shell uh, specifically, well, let me keep that commented out here. You know, if we go back to Z Shell and I just do Shell specifically and we do this demo script again, you know, I can do the one, two, three and it looks uh, normal, right? But yeah, again, like now it's like, yeah, nothing's happening. I do clear, you know, it's basically a similar uh, setup as Bash, except that was just uh, Shell instead. It is important to keep this in there. It's not It's not, not optional. So yeah, that's why I have that in there, even though technically it almost looks like it does work with Z Shell. I think a really nice takeaway about that one is like, yeah, you need to be really, really um, mindful of what shell environment your user is running in. Even if you set something like Bash or Shell in here, you know, even if they're using Z Shell to run it, you could have some subtle differences there. Uh, this all came out from a real world use case. And by the way, we're basically done. But if you're interesting around, interested around the real world use case, I am writing this little like welcome script for some client that I have, which is basically an automated script to set up their dev environment that does a whole bunch of different stuff automatically. And uh, yeah, I actually needed to prompt them for an API key for something. And then when that API key gets entered, then I go and run a command that doesn't echo things out to the screen and it does something with that API key to do stuff. So yeah, I figured now it'd be a great time to make a video because it's like, oh cool, you know, here's how to handle multiple different ways of dealing with uh, hidden input. So with that said, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer all of them. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really does help a lot. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.